Okay, let me talk about the 16 truths of Plumgate, what I found in the Freedom of Information Act documents pertaining to Fukushima that are online at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's website, free and available to the public. My book, Something Wicked This Way Comes, is also free and available to the public. And I have an abstract, a condensed version of that that's very easy to read that has the most important uh, topics and, and that I've found from these documents. So let's very quickly look at what I call the 16 truths of Plumgate. Number one, we see in the Freedom of Information Act documents that they're not being very honest with us when we ask about Chernobyl and we say, how many people died from Chernobyl? And the public establishment response is 49, 50 people, and they're referring to the initial blast and those who were killed in the fire and so on and so forth in the days, immediate days following the disaster. Okay, but in these documents, you see where they're not only modeling from uh, Chernobyl information and data they have, there's also a segment where they discuss the fatalities from Chernobyl, and someone says 49 people, and the guy says, well, no, what about the fallout and people that died from fallout? And there's a discussion from there, and any numbers are conveniently inaudible in that segment, but we can interpret from that that this guy says, look, there's a whole lot more than those that died in the blast. What about from the fallout? And then they say, no, it's more like this and maybe this. And it's an audible in those segments, but the thrust of it is clearly they're not being honest with us about how many died in Chernobyl. In the Ablikov nestrinko study, we know that over 900,000 conservatively have died from Chernobyl, post-Chernobyl, from effects from the fallout. Okay, number two. There's evidence of the cover-up, and it's really as blatant as Elliot Brenner, head of OPA, saying, you know, quote, while we know more than what these say, referring to the press releases, we're sticking to this story for now. There's a lot more to it than that. They're using talking points, Q&As, press releases, prefabricated, the information is suppressed, the modeling is intentionally downplayed, flawed, and bungled. So there's really evidence of this massive government and corporate orchestrated cover-up of the radioactive plume and the fallout. And there's a lot more to it than that in these documents, as we'll see. Okay, and my third truth of Plumegate is the president's worst-case scenario. And we see in these documents that Obama did call for a worst-case scenario, or it's referred to as the president's run or the president's scenario, and that was modeling based on three to five days of emissions, which is horribly short duration, but it covered all four spent fuel pools and three reactors. So it was kind of a real worst case scenario. And also we know in these documents that three days after Obama's Rose Garden speech, the NRC is discussing a request from the White House to do a model that would essentially make what the president said true, that we would not, do not expect harmful levels of radiation. The NRC guys are saying, look, we're going to run this model. The White House requested it, and essentially he, what he said was we didn't expect harmful levels, so this should come out all right. And so in that little particular section there, you can see that it certainly seems like Obama just came out and said, hey, everything's going to be all right. And then days after that, there's evidence they're still running models to make what he said true. I know that many Americans are also worried about the potential risks to the United States. So I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the United States, whether it's the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the, uh, in the Pacific. Let me repeat that. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Number four, how bad it really was. Again, if you read just the opening to my book or the abstract, you'll see the descriptions in these teleconference calls at the Situation Room, people describing the real-time effects at Fukushima, and we had people embedded with TEPCO and the Japanese government, so we got good solid information directly from TEPCO and from the Japanese government. And essentially, I can just sum it up and say it was much, much worse than what they led us to believe. It was a prolonged station blackout, no power, no water for weeks on end. And when that happens, you have a very serious situation. And indeed, that's likely why the president's scenario was based on four spent fuel pools and three reactors. So in a nutshell, 
these documents show it was a lot worse than publicly what they let on and what the mainstream reported. Number five, a dose rates were downplayed and essentially, I just kind of talked about that a minute ago, there's evidence of cherry picking models, evidence of bungling, downplaying models, short term duration, three to five days of emissions and they would say well that'll be under this particular requirement so that should look good. So the models seem to be intentionally flawed, intentionally bungled, and intentionally downplayed. And then people were able to say, hey, we don't expect harmful levels, which kind of covered the fact that, yes, stuff is coming over here, but we phrase it as we don't expect harmful levels, obviously meaning they do expect some level, but that was where the, the cover-up comes into play. They downplay the modeling. They come out and say not to worry about anything. And then later we'll see that the rooftop grabs from nuclear power plants here in the United States were hidden into a secret password protected database. Now, truth number six, TEPCO discharged radioactive water into the Pacific and they've been doing it all along. In these documents, there's absolute proof that TEPCO intentionally discharged radioactive water into the Pacific. Now, not that they had a choice. I mean, at that point, they're just pouring copious amounts of water into these spent fuel pools, like number four was cracked. There was discussion and emails about pouring water in was leaking out quicker than they could put in to fill the pool. So this water has to go somewhere, and logic tells you eventually it's got to go to the sea. So there's evidence that they were discharging intentionally radioactive water all along, and the NRC would have known this again. They didn't say anything. I didn't hear anything from them about it, and the mainstream was silent until not long after I did a video showing from the documents TEPCO's own admission of dumping the radioactive water into the Pacific. Okay, number seven. Unit three and four had a Zerk fire, and likely most of the fuel was destroyed. There's very little fuel that would be recovered, if any, and this leads us into the Unit four offload hoax, which I've got a number of videos on this, and myself and many others do not believe they are offloading the fuel from Unit 4 because in these documents I have 120 pages um, titled Fear and Loathing on Fukushima Unit 4, page 183 in my book you can read, and I have 120 pages of evidence that show Unit 4 likely the fuel was by and large damaged or destroyed in a zirconia fire, quote, melt on the floor. Ten days after the event uh, NRC is still discussing with Navy reactors, will that heated fuel melt through, will it sublimate through the floor of the number four spent fuel pool and onto the torus below? There is some discussion of this. So we're fairly certain that if any fuel was offloaded, it would have been the unused fuel that wouldn't have been uh, heated, and the non-checkerboarded pattern, certainly the evidence leads us to believe the heated fuel, the non-checkerboard pattern, the loss of coolant, the loss of power, the discussion of a Zerk fire, catastrophe, spent fuel pool, melt on the floor. This is some of the evidence we find in the documents that things are not as they say with the spent fuel pools at Fukushima. Number eight. In the United States, nuclear power plants detected fallout from Fukushima. This was not made publicly available, to my knowledge, to anyone, and there wasn't any report in the media about it either. What I found in the documents were evidence that the, the data that was collected from these quote-unquote rooftop grabs went into a password-protected database that only the quote-unquote federal family and the Nuclear Energy Institute would have had access to. It was not made publicly available. So whilst on the one hand they say we don't expect harmful levels, the data sampled from the rooftop grabs at the nuclear power plants in the United States is hidden away in a password protected database and not made available to the public at large. And I remind you in 1986, Oregon had rainwater warnings uh, uh, following Chernobyl. Okay, number nine, truth number nine about Plumegate. There's copious evidence that these Navy ships were just sailed on into the plumes. They knew of repeated plumes, 17-mile plume tracked by NOAA, 60-kilometer measured plumes. As late as the end of March, I have actual verifiable from the documents. You can see these plume detected, sampled actual plume maps, not modeled, but the real thing, 60 kilometers long. And so they sailed the ships right into the plumes, 
even knowing about the MOX fuel, there's discussion. Of Canada says you need to check your dose rates. There was MOX fuel in Unit 3, and you need to readjust your dose rates. And so they were well aware, Navy, Navy reactors, Admiral Willard, Admiral Donald, these guys knew what was going on here. And the ships were sailed into the plumes, and many of you know the result of that. Our sailors are sick, have leukemia, so on and so forth. So I've got a couple documents you want to look at that I link to in my book on the Navy ships and plumes, and it's quite disturbing that they would do that. Okay, number 10, there's plenty of evidence in these documents that the NRC places a much higher value on potassium iodine than they're willing to admit publicly. Here in the States, nuclear power plants are required to consider if they want to stock potassium iodine. Okay, they're only required to think about it and, and consider it. They don't have to stock it. And yet in these documents, make no mistake, they're shipping a lot of KI to Japan. The NRC people are taking it with them before they leave. They're shipping, I believe it's Chuck Castro. He left his stash of KI behind. They're gonna forward it to him as quickly as they can. They're distributing potassium iodine to military and civilians in Japan. So yes, it's very important to have. Don't let them fool you on that one. These documents reveal that on the one hand, they say, nah, it's not that big a deal. But when Fukushima went down, nobody left this country without their potassium iodine. Truth number 11 of Plumegate. Non-seismic spent fuel pools in the United States. I found multiple examples of that and admission that we're not prepared for a co-event earthquake and tsunami. There's a possibility of that as well. So in a nutshell, we're sitting ducks over here whilst our government points at Iran and says bad, bad, bad guys over there with their nuclear program. We're sitting ducks the way our spent fuel pools are set up being non-seismically qualified and knowing the truth of Fukushima in Unit 4 well, this is a very serious concern for me, especially considering the proximity of Indian Point to New York and New Jersey and some of these very heavily populated areas. Okay, number 12. There is clear evidence of subversion of the Freedom of Information Act. In other words, NRC employees, some of them, not all of them, some of them are aware they're being recorded and they censor themselves accordingly. There's even one point where the lady says, hey, let's take this conversation offline. It's politically sensitive. I'm paraphrasing, but I have all these screen captures and documented in my book and in the abstract. And it is Obama's election year in 2012 when this is going down. And certainly they did want to take it offline because this was in regards to California and dose rates in California. So it's not something they wanted made publicly known while President Obama was seeking re-election in 2012. Number 13. The NRC spends millions searching media. And I would say, to be clear, to be fair, I don't know exactly how much they could be spending up to this particular amount in some of this money trail I found in the documents or had some assistance in finding this money trail. But what we see is clear evidence they're spending a lot of money on, on Internet, IT, Internet security, that sort of thing. And then there's evidence in the documents where he says, look, we're going to go out with our bloggers and our, our people online, and we're going to beat this thing down. We're going to address this issue. So you see a clear uh, a response, a, a, a seek, and then destroy, if you will. They, they want to know who's writing. There's even a list of articles from the newspapers and, and television that are compiled and then sent to them so they can see who's talking about the NRC, nuclear power. Some of them are broken into regions, one, two, three, four. And so if anything about Diablo shows up, it would go to region four, for example. And so we see they want to know who's talking about them. They want to know who's saying what, especially post Fukushima. Okay. And then they want to react to that going and try and suppress that to beat that information down, if you will. Okay, number 14, Truth 14 of Plumegate, the Bechtel pumps. In a nutshell, they pushed hard to send these pumps to Japan. Japan didn't really want them. In the end, they shipped one, maybe two units, and John Q. Taxpayer, via the Department of Defense, paid $9.6 billion for the Bechtel pumps. To my knowledge, there's been no refund, and they never used them, in a nutshell. They're probably radiated now, so they're not going to go anywhere. Number 15. Metropolitan Tokyo plumes. Uh, what I found was evidence that a plume drifted down the coast and across Tokyo, and they were well aware of this. These plumes would have been laden with aerosolized plutonium. There's an abstract from a sampling done in Lithuania, which I will provide the link for, and is in my book, 
And this abstract shows in Lithuania, post-Fukushima, they detected aerosolized plutonium. They said it was not from the plutonium they detected in, after Chernobyl, but they had pinpointed to Fukushima. So this stuff is carried in the jet stream. Don't let them fool you and say plutonium's too heavy, it falls to the ground. No, it does not. In aerosolized form, it can be carried around the globe. We know this for a fact. So when I tell people they knew that a, a cloud went down the coast and across Tokyo, Folks, that was probably the time to evacuate Tokyo, and, and realistically, you can't. Where do you move them to? How do you move them? It's impossible. And again, this is what's revealed in these documents. Once you familiarize yourself with Plume Gate and these NRC Freedom of Information Act documents, you know the truth about nuclear power. Okay, and finally, the 16th truth of Plume Gate is the Japan earthquake and tsunami drill, which apparently coincided with the event. Many of you are familiar with Vigilant Guardian prior to 9-11. Many of you know about the drills for the federal building, before the federal building, before the 7-7, uh, the train bombing in England, before the Aurora drill, the Oslo shooting, the Aurora massacre, the Oslo shooting. The pattern is there's a drill prior to or at the time of the event, and this is very disturbing because on 3-11, we find evidence of a Japan earthquake and tsunami drill wherein Elliot Brenner, head of OPA, is telling people this is not to be talked about. Okay, this is off limits. And they know that Japan quote unquote utility execs are in, I believe it's Rockville, Maryland, for this combined incident response. It's like a convention and they have this Japan earthquake and tsunami drill, combined incident response. Okay, so the time this goes down, players are already in position, okay, and it's quite disturbing that this happened on the same day as the actual event. Again, many of us are not coincidence theorists, so we know, we see a pattern here, and this is something I've said time and time again, our country, our citizens need to have a very serious, rational discussion about just who is doing this and just what their intentions are. Okay, now... Those are the 16 truths that I have derived from the NRC FOIA documents and what I call Plumegate. Again, I have a free uh, book in PDF form, and I have an abstract. And get this information out. Thank you for joining me on this third anniversary special. This is Patrick Penry.